Check standby, mics are on. And we're gonna, oh. <laughs> well, that faded out very nicely, didn't it? Oh, mate, we haven't got fade thing on, have we? We'll put the fade thing on, right, okay. Okay, so there's the first tech issue. <laughs> uh, that's my fault. Good evening, everybody. Hope you're doing well. It's Friday night, and um, let's just uh, uh, turn that down a little bit because I want to sort of like um, welcome everybody and, and, and say hi. How are you doing? Um, I'm Jerry, and uh, that's Jilly. And um, Jilly is the TCO technical uh, chief. Uh, TCO, oh, t the TSU, um, the te te technical chief operating officer. Uh, all of a sudden. Um, but uh, yeah, um, how are you doing? Hope you're well. Uh, this is our weekly, uh, for now, weekly. I think in summer, we're probably going to go bi-weekly, two a month, um, just uh, because it's longer evenings and we're going to be doing lots of uh, lots of stuff. So um, it's going to be quite a, a busy schedule, obviously, during the uh, during the summer months. Um, uh, and and we'll, we'll have lots to talk about. I mean, to be honest with you, a lot of the, the the news that I'm that I'm bringing up to date tonight uh, is literally over the last couple of days. It is incredible how you know on Google on my settings on my phone I um, I get a lot of uh, aviation news from all the majors and um, and talk and all that kind of stuff. And that's where I get a lot of this stuff from. A lot of you folks have already uh, informed us about a lot of stuff, and uh, we really appreciate that as well. But we will just uh, start the show off with a bit, a bit of news, um, and then we're going to go into uh, about the A380. Now, if you have a little look here, uh, let's just have a, let's just run over, let's just go over to the airport, shall we? Perfect. Okay, uh, so now what we do is we will remove that just for a second. Uh, oh, which one was it? It was, it was this one, wasn't it? There we go. Okay, there we go, folks. <laughs> okay, the museum is, uh, is, is where it's, it's staying, where it's at. The Boac Concorde is, um, is staying here. Oh, a little bit of a computer in the background there behind the Marriott. <laughs> I think that's an advertising hoarding for Windows or something like that, with a giant search thing on it. Uh, but anyway, the 124 uh, is operational today. We can just run that down a little bit. Uh, don't want it too, too low. Um, hope that's all right, folks. Um, we'll just have a little look around the airport. Uh, because today's um, uh, theme, the theme is the uh, the A380, and uh, the A380's stopping power is what we're talking about. Of course, there are other major, amazing things about the A380, which we will talk about in other shows as well. But just for now, um, we wanted to sort of like fill the airport up and celebrate the A380 because it is an amazing machine, whichever way you look at it. I know a lot of people be like, no, 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 the jumbo's the best. Well, yeah, we'll never lose our allegiance to the jumbo jet. Never, never, not in a million years. Um, but the A380, let's face it, she's gonna be operational for quite a few more years. So let's just celebrate it. Um, two uh, different type of engine units, the Rolls-Royce, uh, the Trent 900 and the, um, the uh, uh, Pratt & Whitney PW, uh, uh, GPW 7200, I think it is, um, which is the uh, unit that powers uh, a mixture of aircraft. Emirates, for example, use the, uh, the both uh, power units on, on their fleet, which is around about 149, I think. Uh, we're losing a little bit of focus there. Um, but anyway, uh, beautiful uh, new Emirates livery over there at uh, gate one, BA's 380 at gate two. Lufthansa, uh, these are obviously operational. Uh, look at that beautiful old Etihad livery on that 380. Isn't that fantastic? Um, and uh, of course, over there, we've got uh, the other side of the airfield. Um, and as you can see, more engines going on the uh, the Antonov. So still those, uh, those operations, those ad hoc, engine operations going on from uh, Staines International. Uh, we're very proud to be uh, to be doing that. The, there's your uh, there's your museum with the TriStar and the DC10. Uh, anyone can visit. Uh, they very luck they very fortunately put me out there today. Look. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that, man? It's, um, <laughs> what was his name? Flipping heck. Um, uh, someone's going to say it, Julie. Look out for his name. Look out for his name. He's, um, Martin? Oh, no, no. Mark? No. 
No, not Dave either. Um, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a unique name is what it is. I think I seem to remember. Someone's going to say it. Someone's going to say it. The guy that made did the three D, oh. <laughs> the three D printing. Okay, so um, in the shop we have this beautiful. Oh, let's just take you over to the other side of the airport. Let's not uh, let's not forget about those guys. Got the main tower over there, of course. A little red light on the top of it, um, and of course the um, the inner perimeter uh, staff um, and airport vehicles um, overpass. Coletta's 767 in there um, with. Uh, with uh, I think she's just Sam. got it. Was it Sam? Sam. Okay, that's not a unique name, but it, it's no. Sam Northworthy. That was it. His surname was was uh, was unique. Um, but look at that FedEx Triple Seven. Uh, the uh, both the um, belly and the main cargo deck doors are open on that on that one four hundred scale model. Isn't that fantastic? Unfortunately, the um, the three eighties tail is is sort of. Uh, taking that up at the moment but she's a beautiful big bird look at this uh, this kia aura isn't it the uh, all nippon 380 look at the way they've painted those those cows in the matching colors as well um but anyway what i wanted to also show you folks before we get on on with the show and the uh, and the news and all that is just the detail what i talked about last week was uh, if you're going to buy a model right um or models uh, um maybe consider a diorama like that um unbelievable uh, workmanship on that aircraft let me just um show you just a little bit of the uh, see how deep i can get in here look at the, the workmanship there it's all perforated it's uh, obviously stamped out in tin but look the air conditioning units um, just everything about it that's stamped out in tin as well um, you can buy this in two separate units as well i think it's around about 70 quid for each 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 unit um but look at the detailing in these uh in these steps here which are just absolutely incredible uh, air conditioning fans everything down there it's just very very lifelike and um again that's all out of ard aviation retail direct our good friend did you say A&A? did i say ana because it's high fly isn't oh it's it? high fly isn't it sorry 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 i was going to pick uh, ana up Sorry, uh, someone's obviously corrected me on that one. The beautiful high fly jet, um, which is, uh, is it too late for the coral reefs? We all ask coral ourselves. Coral reef, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the coral reef. Um, but uh, isn't it beautiful? Fantastic, uh, fantastic livery and fantastic aircraft. And we'll talk about the 380 in a short while. Just see, uh, just have a little, snoo a little um, sneaky look over at the, uh, the fire department who, uh, who've had a, um, A330 wing um uh, donated to them that they are now using for fire practice of course the 727 is still there as well um the um qatar dreamliner back in the hangar which is quite interesting um obviously that engine change didn't go to plan um but anyway so let's try this then shall we jilly <laughs> um let's go with that there uh, no hold on a minute back to that um and um remove that Oh, no, 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 no. Keep that one on. Sorry, sorry. Remove that one. Um, so what we're going to do is um, kick the show off with um, a little bit of news about um, what I heard uh, early to earlier today is that Boeing will not be um, appearing uh, at the Singapore Air Show, not with uh, static aircraft on display, put it that way. Um, I'm just going to show you a, um, a quick, oh, where's share screen? I'll present this, this, this one here. <laughs> no, stop screen. It's already there, Jerry. Oh, it's here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'd already loaded it up. Uh, but there you go, folks, the beautiful 777X. And that is taken from, uh, I think it's 2022 Singapore Air Show. Um, great shame. Uh, we'll just have to see what um, what transpires with uh, with the whole thing. Um, it's it's, it's got to be, I would have thought, um, quite embarrassing. I'd say for Boeing, you know, why are you not coming? You know, like all your mates, like what, what's what's going on? You know, you still got the triple seven X. You should still promote your brand, promote your product, get out there and just say, look, we're dealing with it. 
we're we're addressing everything as best we possibly can. But for now, you know, our, our aircraft are perfectly safe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Even though um, this week, uh, I believe that um, a number of aircraft 737s were um, 737 uh, plug doors, I think, or um, or no, 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 it wasn't the plug doors. It was 737 700s that had been found with um, with a um, with, with oh. Okay, sorry. Um, that had been found with um, misaligned screws or wrongly screwed drill holes, uh, which is a, a a real concern. Obviously, I think that I don't know whether that's related, where that's related inside the fuselage, whether it is what they had before with the earlier models was the um, was the, uh, the the drill holes in the bulkhead, the rear bulkhead that had to be uh, uh, fixed. That's uh, obviously going to cause much, many more delays for Boeing. So, um, yeah, a great shame for them that they're not going to be there. Um, the uh, the Airbus A380 with Emirates Airlines is uh, going to continue um, on into for, 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 for quite some time, folks, as we all know. Um, and uh, let's just bring that one up. There we go. Um, I have to click on it, don't I? That's not good, that is. Oh, that's a very bad... What's with the what's with the brightness on that GP? Oh, what's Phil Sale about? That's Jay. That's your monitor. Okay, that's okay. Well, let's, let's bring up the other one, shall we? Um, which is uh, uh, well. Anyway, let's just uh, move on to the next one. But about the uh, the A three eighty forty nine airports this summer. Not surprisingly, the UK is the most served country with up to fourteen daily services. Fourteen Emirates A three eighty. So. Couple that obviously with your Qatars and your Etihads and your and your uh, your British Airways and all that mob. Um, it makes it a very very busy airport. Um, interestingly enough, and you always there's always a, a, a you know a little bit of bad news. Some t- ten ten airports globally that saw the carriers quadjets in 2019 uh, or more recently will not have them this summer. Well. There's probably something to do with uh, that. That's down in the Asian area, which is uh, probably serving with um, China Airlines, which have now reti- obviously retired a long time ago. And the re- and the reduction in A380s uh, being put on the routes with uh, newer aircraft, you know, triple sevens and uh, Dreamliners and so on and so forth. These long range jets are very capable, of course. Um, so, uh, so, so no surprises there really. And that was 2019 as well. We know that the, uh, the industry is massively picked up. Uh, next thing on the agenda, uh, let's hope this one works. Um, let's just see if this works because we've got, um, interestingly enough, SAS have announced, um, that they are going to be, um, there you go. There's a good. There's a good picture. AS, SAS have announced they're going to introduce. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Finnair. Uh, this was this was a, a, a story about Finnair. Sorry, <laughs> um, about them weighing their passengers, which um, which is uh, they're, 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 they're trialing it. Put it that way. So I don't I don't know whether it it, it relates to all uh, routes or all flights or what, but I know that they're trialing it, um, and that's quite interesting because I, when, as soon as I saw. The um, as soon as I saw it announced, I, I immediately thought that that would be Ryanair. To be perfectly honest with you, but no, uh, these guys at Finnair are going to be are doing a trial with uh, f- weighing their passengers. So uh, some quite interesting stuff going to be going on there. That's for sure. Um, let's just remove that. Uh, oh, actually, hold on a minute. That was quite interesting, wasn't it? Um, so uh, yeah, SAS weighing their passengers. Um, did I get that SAS 350? I don't think I did, you know. Let me just uh, quickly bring this up here. Um, because the news is um, they are to reintroduce their uh, A350, which we have seen uh, quite a number of times. Good looking jet in the new livery, I have to say. Let's just see if we can find one here. Um, good luck with that. Um, what's this one doing here? That's, that's quite a nice one. Flight Radar 24. I'll, I'll have some of that. Uh, save image, blah, blah, blah. Save, etc. JPEG image. That's good. Uh, let's bring that one up. Close that. <laughs> um, where was that one? It's uh, it's here. Uh, bring that one up full screen. There we go. Present. 
uh, share screen window, blah, blah, blah. Put, do that and then do that. And then, um, oh, it's doing it. That's a, that's okay. Well, there you go. Flight radar. 25. You know where that, that looks like, uh, that look, kind of looks like Chicago, doesn't it? Uh, is that Chicago? I don't know. Look at that. Uh, look at that. What's that? Um, wow. Yeah, I'm just looking in the background, but um, that's a roll out and a half. That is, isn't it? She 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 hasn't just touched down, has she? Is that touching down or is that going out? Is that climbing out? It's a long, unless that's at the very front end of the runway or the far end of the runway for going out. But yeah, still looks good. And um, I uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully maybe seeing uh, every now and then uh, an SAS 350 in at London Heathrow. Have we ever seen an SAS 350 in at London Heathrow? Of course, Finnair bring theirs in, don't they? Um, with um, for freight uh, more more than anything else. Um, but uh, there you go. So SAS A350. Uh, we've all got our opinions on the livery. I like it, uh, but I'm 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 a big fan of the orange engine nacelles. I wish I had a left the orange engine nacelles, but that was obviously put out to uh, to tender uh, amongst. Um, I don't know if it was employees or if it was um, frequent flyers or what they'd like to see, but uh, it's a shame they didn't keep. Uh, the engine cows. This is uh, this we heard from uh, Roger. Uh, don't know whether it was today or um, or yesterday, but um, Eater are going to be uh, pulling out of London Heathrow and operating uh, London City and Gatwick. So um, that's interesting, isn't it? So that'll be the three twenty. I'm getting three twenty can go out of three twenty Neo can go out of London City. I guess it's. Uh, uh, I mean, they've got three nines, the old ones, haven't they? But, but but I don't know. Um, or are they? Or are they perhaps considering um, other aircraft to operate out of London City? Can uh, that operate out of London City? The three twenty. Because when I flew that, the um, the uh, the simulator, uh, the the um, the onboard systems were going runway too short. Literally, uh, that's the uh, the call out that the <laughs> that the onboard systems make. It's it's uh, it really does shout at you because you're landing on a runway that is too short uh, operationally for the aircraft that you are flying in. Um, but there we go. So um, ETA pulling out of Heathrow. Uh, we'll just have to see that or how that all um, uh, pans out. We've got the uh, the weighing passengers thing. Uh, here's an interesting one. Obviously. Um, the uh, the folks at uh, Boeing are, are sort of like uh, in a, in more pickle, especially with um, with Emirates, um, basically saying it's the last chance saloon uh, for you guys in terms of um, getting things sorted out for um, you know with 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 everything that's that's going on, um, you know, in terms of your your safety and quality control. Uh, that's what's um, that's what's on the table at the moment. Um, they've basically had a, had a you know, um, obviously some some hard words to say to to um, to Boeing. Uh, look at those beautiful um, lead. They're, they're the um, the fold up wing tips of the triple seven X, and aren't they absolutely a thing of beauty? I do hope they sort it out. Um, I really do because this is this will be this will turn into an absolutely beautiful aircraft in terms of uh, what it looks like on out on the um, out on the field. And here's a, here's another one. Um, this is quite a nice one, which is just literally um, oh my nut. That's crazy that I've got a print. Oh yeah, that's that's bad lighting. That's really bad lighting. But there you go. Um, interestingly, we didn't see. Uh, Where's that then? That's interesting, isn't it? I don't think that's yeah. Where have they flown that to then? I wonder. Um, anybody know about that? But look at this from Emirates and what their um, what their uh, interior is going to look like on uh, on their jets uh, on their triple seven X. Isn't that just incredible? The Sky Lounge or something like that. Um, pretty incredible, man. Uh, and that wouldn't surprise me because nowadays they've got those new things, haven't they, where you can, um, these, these, um, virtual screens, almost like what we've got behind us now, where they, where they, um, uh, project an image onto, onto your, your, your patio doors of like, you know, beaches and stuff like that. Very expensive. But, uh, these guys have obviously sussed it out with, with curved glass or, 
um, whether it's ever actually going to happen. But wow, look at that, man. I mean, um, if you had that on a plane and it was real time moving, you could actually, in a way, it would really calm you, wouldn't it? More, more so than, you know, looking in the cabin and just seeing people and I'll completely terrify you. No, no, because it would it would be it would be obviously a um, uh, a long loop, wouldn't it? It's not. It wouldn't be real good life. Alien but, spot. Well, yeah, good alien spot. Yeah, or cruises or something like that. Um, but there you go. Um, so last chance saloon uh, is what Emirates are basically saying to Boeing. Um, up to what point is it? Up to what point are they going to say, right, look, you know what, we're going to pull everything, we're going to go to Airbus. Um, or uh, I mean, that's a huge, huge loss for Boeing if that does happen. I really do hope it doesn't because we want to see those triple X's flying. But with all these delays with the 737, the, th uh, the, the 700, um, the, um, the, uh, the, the sorry, the 7, uh, the 7 Max and the 9 Max, uh, uh, um, you know, that uh, coupled with some of the technical issues that they've been having with the um, with the Dreamliner and also um, the 777X now as well, of course, in terms of uh, being delayed even more. Uh, people are just not going to like it. But uh, I, for one, um, I'm, I, I really like to see Boeing um, deal with it and get it done and get a lot more faith in their product um, by way of... I mean, I did see something. I, I've got to be honest with you. Here. They they talked about um, robotic AI type um, uh, technology that they're going to use for more robotic stuff in the in the in the assembly lines. Well, yeah, okay. Well, you know, does that mean you don't have faith in your in your in your workforce? Um, I would have said you rather than spending all that money, you just bring specialist people in who've got one job to do, and that is like a building inspector, constantly walking around, checking every single thing. You know, I mean, these guys are sort of like doing their things. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they will have some kind of like final inspection. But what happened with the um, with the spirit thing where the spirit employees um, were, uh, were, were, were brought in to refit the, uh, the plug door on the 737 and it transpires that uh, there, um, they're, they're, uh, they were partly responsible for, for, for not attaching it properly. Uh, employees from Spirit who make the uh, the door and manufacture the fuselage, etc. Et uh, ben Brown, Big Jet TV, Thai have ordered, Thai Airlines have ordered 45 787s with 35 options according to sources familiar to the, uh, to, to the matter via Reuters. Reuters sorry. Um, interesting. That's a great order. Is it on paper or is it a letter of intent is the, is the main question that we have to ask ourselves there. OK, a little bit of uh, global news that we sort of like touched on last week uh, about um, global airlines. Uh, um, that they were now um, and it's which one is it? Let me just bring it over here so I can see it properly. Um, the uh, the aircraft that they have. Ah, oh, where is it? Oh, mate, I had it on here. Oh, that's a shame. Um, the um, China, the China Southern uh, A380. Can you quickly throw one up on the um, on the thing, Fong Jilly? This is um, this is the fella who's um, who's 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 basically whose um, airline it is. Um, oh, blimey, what's his name again? Oh, for a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Um, oh, I'll bring it up on the screen. People I know. Um, there he is. Um, but that's the aircraft. Oh, let me just hold on. Click on that. That's the aircraft that um, James Asquith. That's his name. Um, this is the aircraft. He's, he's, his, his money comes from all sorts of things, I think, and uh, um, a um, Airbnb. Um, anything there, like that top left hand one there. Or oh, actually, hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's one of it. There's one of it at uh, in storage. No, that's one. No, 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 no. Are you sure? This. Uh, I think it was right up the top. It was right up the top. Uh, there, there, that one there. That one. Yeah, that one there. Okay. So, so this is James Asquith. Um, some time ago, in fact, we're talking about nearly a year ago, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where that was taken, but I don't think it was in the US. This is not the aircraft that he um, he is going to be using uh, as it stands at the moment. That is another aircraft that he he um, he was planning to buy. 
uh, went and stuck a load of stickers on it and uh, painted the tail up a little bit. Um, it doesn't sort of like fill you with like, wow. But I mean, obviously it'd be great to see another uh, A380 operational, but you know, in terms of like shareholders and stuff like that, uh, with me, it'd be like, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, she's just gone down a breaker's yard and, uh, um, and that is the other one. Oh, you see now you, you uh, that's, that's what I want. Um, but that is, that is it. I'm absolutely sure. Uh, that was it from a news article where China Southern would, had retired their a380s that doesn't look like that's been there for very long because uh uh engine covers i don't know if she's got engine covers on her but they were all um taped up like the one that you just saw now um like all the windows all the vents all the everything that that, that has anywhere that dust can get into um the wheels are covered the engines obviously need uh, need covers at the front and the back but i don't know if that's the one um, if anybody's uh, making a point of that, um, let's just have a let's just quickly jump to the chat, which is here. Um, no, it's not. It's here. <laughs> uh, it's an old Lufthansa A380, that original one. Time to travel. Saying, um, does this whiff of Freddie Laker? Sam Warren saying, well, Freddie just came in straight in and did it, didn't he? I don't know if there was news that he was planning to do it. I think he just came in and did it. Um, he claims that he has four 380s, Pico 7 saying, lots of 380s in the boneyards, Martin Smith. Somewhere I'd love to go, but I'd hate to go, if you know what I mean, because it is such a sad sight. Um, but... Um, Oh, uh, uh, China Southern, uh, Ben Brown saying, only retired A380s around a year ago, all at Mojave. And that's where that is. And that is uh, where um, James Asquith is taking delivery f uh, for it from. Uh, it's going to be High Fly, isn't it, who are going to be uh, doing the interior, I believe, of the aircraft. Um, quite uh, a bit of a, a bit of a blow for them last week or this week was that uh, two of the major um, uh, uh, advisors, uh, to um, Global Airlines was uh, both left um, the operation this week. Um, one was uh, she was an ex-pilot with uh, with EasyJet, and um, and and the other woman was uh, once on the board in uh, at, at London Heathrow. So um, is is now obviously a, a speaker or something like that. Either that or the the, the, the EasyJet pilot. She's a speaker. But interesting. Um, have they said right? We've done our work. That's it. That we you know we, we're we're done. We don't need you. Don't need our help anymore. Or has there been a little bit of a tiff, you know, uh, around the water bottle? <laughs> um, the indoor, uh, the inboard looks more slanted down than the outer, Scotty too. It does. Yeah, I think that's more an optical illusion, but it definitely does. Um, I think that's with the wing design, maybe. Uh, but that's that, that is quite noticeable, that isn't it? Um, we'll have to have a look at a, a few more to see what's uh, what's going on there. Um, let's scroll down. Comments, comments, comments. Um, said Heathrow twice. Uh, the first A380 is registered is nine uh, HG uh, GLBL Global. Yes, uh, Suffer six three. That's what he's saying, um, and um, I'm hoping we'll see it. I really do. Again, I have to say, uh, the uh, the issue for me is the um, is uh, is is the parking and uh, the destinations. You know, um, the routes that they're going to be operating on. I know it's planning to be uh, Miami, um, but obviously uh, their original plans were to fly out of London Gatwick. Uh, again, I have to say, I don't know how Emirates feel about that or whether, because uh, they certainly wouldn't have enough money to, 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 to build another gate uh, and another parking spot. I don't think they could do it anyway, um, unless it was off stand. Maybe they might be uh, doing it off stand, which would mean they need steps up into the 380 ooh, um, off the ground. I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> I'd be, uh, yeah, 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 take me out there. You know, I'd uh, stand out. Oh, I've dropped something. Um Hold on a minute. Uh, click, click, click. Uh, just, uh, yeah, no, you go ahead. You know, you go ahead. You know, I go, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Just stand there looking at this thing, you know, like shh, shh, the APUs on and all that kind of thing. Oh, mate, and the smell and all that. So maybe there's an option for uh, for Mr. Asquith uh, to do remote stand at, uh, at Londonian Gatwick. Um, didn't I read somewhere other people didn't understand why? He was obsessed with the 380 and not the use of more economical aircraft. Clive Clark, very true. I mean, he's going to need to fill those flipping things uh, to um, 
to, uh, to, to to make the money back. Um, yeah, when was that? July 2023, though. Um, you know, uh, they're adding another to three, uh, 380s. This is the only sort of like, uh, well, I mean, the uh, the original image that, uh, let's just go back to that one so you can... Um, you can see what I'm talking about, which does not really look very sexy at all, um, is um, is that one, which just looks very sad indeed, the, the, the whole thing. Uh, that was the first uh, venture in terms of his him going into 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 the uh, the program, the holiday program. Uh, I, I, yes, I'm a little bit miffed about that. I mean, uh, I think the reason you'll find that, the, that he's got a 380 is he probably picked it up for a couple of quid. And I'm not joking. Um, some of these operators, uh, once the lease is up or they've done a deal and it owes them no money anymore, it's like, mate, you might as well have it. Give us a couple of quid so at least we've got something on paper. Trust me, it's happened many, many times. Um, maybe not that. Maybe you paid half a million for it or something like that. I don't know. But it's a big un undertaking in terms of, you know, uh, uh, the, the interior of the aircraft, two decks. Um, maybe it'll, it'll obviously be able to hopefully uh, put a little bit of freight on it, some ad hoc, um, some freight. Uh, everyone's uh, always happy to put a bit of freight on, but the A380 doesn't carry a tremendous amount of freight, uh, which uh, which uh, which is a little bit problematic. Miami's a good, a good um, um, uh, destination for freight. So that would kind of work. Um so we'll have to see. Let's just see how um, how uh, how things um, uh, uh, progress again with uh, Monsieur Asquith, and uh, hopefully he will um, he will he will bring that whole thing to the table. Right, here's a little thing that we picked up on last last week um, with the Rolls Royce Rolls Royce Ultra Fan. Now uh, remember, we showed you this picture, okay, which is uh, pretty damn cool, man. Look at this. Uh, okay. What's going on there? Oh, why not? Um, just let me double click it. There we go. Um, sorry, I've got a technical issue, folks. That really, you should have these on your screen, Julian. You you put them up because because I don't know what I'm having to hold the cursor down on this. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so that is the Alps engine, folks, that that we saw last week because we were a little bit sort of miffed, and then Rolls Royce Engineering came in and said they have definitely not test it on an aircraft so i thought well not only does it it looks a little bit small doesn't it, it looks about more trendy than anything else um but uh this is the advanced the alps advanced low pressure system um operating on this um operating on this 747 test bed for rolls royce and isn't it beautiful are they rb211s are they rb211s um the other engines, how cool is that? Um, A380s uh, do carry containers in their lower cargo hold. They do, they definitely do, but not as many as something like a 777, um, which is still, I think, the leader in terms of commercial airliners with the biggest cargo capacity. Um, I'm not sure what the 350 um, 1000 can carry um, in terms of its belly. Uh, somebody may come up here and, and let me know about that. But that is the, um, that's the test bed. Um, but what I want to show you is this. Here we go, Julie. This is it. This is it here, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, bring this up. This is a good one. Listen out for this one and watch it, folks. Watch it as well because uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be um, quite. Uh, it's, how long is it? I can't. It's, it's 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 not that long, but it really does show. Uh, give you some more interesting um uh, information on this alps system which is the low pressure um compressor which is the forward uh, the, the main f uh, um uh, fan blades themselves uh and they have also um managed to uh put a put a put a um a a, a, um, a casing around it as well so they're really moving on with this so i'm going to play this out and um it, i might have to double i might have to uh uh, so here we go. Let's play it there. Yes, perfect. Muted? Am I muted?
you, really. That's a shame. Okay. Oh, that's a shame, folks. Because oh, I can hear it. Oh. Okay, when you're sharing, when you're sharing your screen, there's a setting to enable audio on the tab. Yeah, you can't have it on. When what? Okay. When I'm in here? No, can't we play it full screen? And can we play? It f Click on present. On present. present. Yeah, yeah. Share screen. Oh. No, because I've got to take that off. I've got to take that off, haven't I? I've got Yes. Stop screen. Let's start again. Okay. Yeah, Present. Share screen. Yep. Window. Chrome tab. Chrome tab. Read what you see in front of you. Chrome tab, window, or edit screen, or entire screen. You've got two wires dangling in front of your screen. Oh, it's not that bad. Select a tab to share. Window. Which ones do you want? Is that on? Also share tab audio. It's on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Don't it's on. It off. Okay, it's on. Right, okay. So, window. Hold, 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 hold. Can you test your the video before you play it out? Uh, Over there on your screen. Yeah. It's playing out on my headset. No. No? It's not going to work. Okay, okay. <laughs> Is it on YouTube? Is it on YouTube? We looked for it. Oh. oh, that's a shame. So, so they, they, they're showing game. The only way they can... Oh. No. no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not working, mate. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Well, let's... Um, well, anyway, folks, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe do it a little bit next week on the Ultrafan. Uh, uh, well, on the on the uh, uh, the Alps engine, which is the, uh, the fan casing. I believe... Uh, sorry, the fan blades themselves. I believe also um, that the uh, I think it, I think um, Rolls Royce engineer told us last week that the um, the coating on the blades Please is. Uh, a question. Yeah. Can I try it? Can you try what? To play the video out. All right, here we go. No, not your mouse. Okay. <laughs> What's the URL? Oh, okay. Oh, blimey. <laughs> okay, let me just uh, control C. Uh, how am I going to get that to you then? What's that? No. Email it. No, just tell me what the. It's bleeding massively long. HTTPS www. Rolls Royce and Media Press releases. Whose website is it on? Rolls Royce. Okay. Rolls Royce dot com. Uh, poor attempt of uh, elevator music. Um, see my Braniff tail there, folks? Uh, and she a beauty. It's going out on runway 27. Right. There's several Rolls Royces. Ultrafan. Rolls Royce Ultrafan, one step closer as advanced low pressure system testing gets underway. It's a beautiful looking engine, isn't it? Um, and how powerful are these uh, are these new next generation engines? Um, the GE nine X and the the Ultra Fan. Uh, they're building the big one first, uh, and then they're going to scale it down to um, to uh, to engines the size of the Leap and the the Pratt and Whitney. And then, of course, um, when they bring all that technology forward they're able to upgrade uh other engines as well in the in the trent family as well um already doing it um and and that's adding more um uh efficiency to the engine in terms of its uh, capabilities um and range and uh, fuel burn and um you know um footprint literally at the end of the day um it's amazing how how these um, these airlines, uh, sorry, these operators, these engine manufacturers, are so much. Um, it's 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 the big thing nowadays, isn't it? The aircraft have have met their uh, their designs now in terms of you know the big super twins. Uh, I can't see there being another super twin other than obviously the triple seven X for 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 some time yet. Um, they are planning. I know that Rolls Royce have mentioned about this engine, the Ultrafan, being used as a swap out potential 
for the A350 and possibly even if they get it uh, in time, maybe on the A380s as well. Um, uh, maybe a slightly smaller ver variant of it. I don't know because I think the A380 would, um, I don't know, tread 900 and the um, and the XWB sort of like not far off in terms of their uh, their uh, things about um, – I think it's about hundred thousand pounds of thrust on the XWB and the Trent Nine, um, maybe around about ninety. I don't know what its top rate is. Um, are you ready to go on it, Julie? I want to test it. Okay, Do you want test to go for it. it? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Watch this, folks. It's all about the ultra fan. Very, very interesting. Watch and don't tap. Don't type. <laughs> don't type. Just watch. <laughs> nice one. Well, this is our demonstrator engine for the composite fan blade and fan case. We've previously run it at, of blade only with a with a sort of donor engine's metal fan case. And this time is the first time we've run a composite fan blade system with the fan case. The aim is to uh, demonstrate the technology and underpin and de-risk the ultra fan program. Beautiful. Well, Ultrafan is absolutely critical to our future. If you look at Rolls Royce as a company, you know, a very large slice of the company is our wide body business. We've been extraordinarily successful on that. So, in order for the next generation of, of wide body to continue that success, over the last couple of years, we've been working on what technologies, what should the cycle look like. Uh, we've concluded on the Ultrafan cycle. We're taking um, a, a low pressure fan system um, and we're marrying that to a Trent Thousand donor engine to allow us to test it. And we're going to prove that this technology works on a, an architecture that we've already got flying around in service. Well, the major benefit of composite fan is to reduce the overall weight of the engine, um, which is not just a big benefit for the engine for itself, but it's a huge benefit for the airframer as well. Our customers are really interested in the That's specific time. fuel consumption of our engine. They're interested in the weight, the noise that our products generate, um, particularly with the stringent legislation requirements that are around. The composite fan system aims to address and improve all of those three key areas. The demonstrator programs have been demonstrating the, the key technologies that feed into that. And now the ultrafan demonstrator program pulls that all together to demonstrate it. So, you know, in the, in the 2020s, we can offer that into the into the market. Is that it? I oh, said, okay, we're out, we're done. Um, I was hoping they might see might see the test. However, I say you might want to see the test. Um, something that we can show you. Let's just see. Anyway, really good stuff about the ultra fan. Very excited to see that engine um being uh, brought to the table it's going to be quite a few years yet i think before it's uh, operational on an aircraft um because obviously they're developing it they're developing it as the new ultra fan family i think uh maybe um uh three or four different options different types i mean obviously at the moment um rolls royce are offering the uh, the trent um the trent xwb um still oper uh, exclusively on the a350 um, the Trent 1000 on the 787s, on not all 787, but some of, some of them. Trent 900s, the further back you go, they're starting to get sort of like older technology, but they're still able to take some of the technology. Um, interesting to note there that that's a carbon fan case, uh, which uh, uh, reduces the weight quite, quite substantially. And that's the first time that Rolls-Royce have been dabbling in the uh, the carbon fan case technology. So good to see that. Um, Rohit Parkal making, I see a point there about the, um, the A220 doors, um, oh, beautiful engine from Matt, sorry. Um, Rohit Parkal saying Airbus 220 doors will now be manufactured in Bengaluru. It was on the news here in India earlier tonight. Yes, also Rohit, they also currently manufacture the cargo doors for the A320, uh, Neo, I believe. So, um, so more good news, uh, for India in terms of their, uh, their production. That's, that's really good. Uh, Lady Hal, uh, the, uh, sorry, Lady Hull, the Ultrafan Power Gearbox has delivered 64 megawatts on test. Uh, an aerospace power record, Ultrafan offers a 25% fuel burn improvements on the first generation of Trent engines. 
Um, yeah, and indeed, um, even that is, uh, I think, 10% uh, fuel burn efficiency on the current uh, XWBs, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, still a massive step up um, in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of efficiency. So, uh, and of course, with those fan blades, it just it reduces the weight of the engine a hell of a lot. And we're talking about two tonnes on an engine, aren't you? If, if not more, six tonnes. Was it six tons or was it two tons? Or was it, I don't know. Um, I always go on that weight. Um, how does the 7,000 compare? Yeah, the Lucia. Yeah, the Trent 7,000 as well, on the which has been um, redeveloped um, as, a, as a big fan engine. Uh, they've, they've basically taken uh, technology from the Trent 1000 and um, uh, modified uh, – uh, an engine to 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 replace the Trent 700, which is uh, like a it's kind of like a a morph between the uh, Trent 1000 and the XWB engine. Uh, great to look at as well if you get that seat uh, sort of like at the front where you sort of like looking down the pylon of the engine, you can see all the different panels and all that kind of thing on the A350. If you ever get it, cowling of the Gen X has a larger diameter. Um, the cowling of the Aiden Campbell uh, cowling of the Gen X has a larger diameter than the fuselage of the 737. It doesn't. The fan diameter, it's the it's the uh, outer diameter, I think you'll find, of the GENX is actually smaller than the um, than the um, uh, fan, ca- the, than the fuselage of the 737. Aidan, we did it last week, didn't we? Um, we, uh, we talked about that. Um, the fan... Yeah, it's uh, you, you need to have a look at the have a look at the two together because uh, there is there is a, quite a bit of that on Google about you know whether the seven thirty seven because there's always been that myth that seven thirty seven will fit inside uh, um, uh, the, the GE ninety you know uh, not even the one one five before it was uh, sorry sorry not even the um, the, uh, the the GE nine uh, X but we're talking about the GE ninety the uh, interior fan casing diameter of the uh, GE ninety is is smaller than the outer diameter of the 737 fuselage i think you'll find if you uh if you have a little look for that um somewhere online it definitely is there i did my calculations i know i'm absolutely useless at maths and all that but i did trip a triple check it and double check it and we showed it last week on the show so uh so uh, <laughs> um, if, if I'm wrong, then uh, whatever. Uh, if the ultra fan is so big, wherever, um, if, if the ultra fan is so big, whatever airframe is fitted to, we'll have to have taller landing gear, surely. Uh, Nick, I'd, I'd imagine n- not really. I think they've still got enough ground clearance. You look at the, um, uh, you know, obviously the, en- the, the, the engine size will be specific to the aircraft as well, of course. I think the uh, because the uh, the ultra fan is going to be the biggest um, outer diameter fan casing and biggest diameter fan blades. Uh, a very small margin bigger than the uh, the the, the GE nine X, but even so, um, it's uh, that's that's the um, that's what they're saying at Rolls Royce. Um, and uh, obviously, they're looking at that in terms of they wouldn't have to modify the aircraft in terms of making the the, the, the undercarriage larder because that was basically an impossibility because they'd have to remodify the whole aircraft. So, um, and I, 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 they wouldn't sort of like um, uh, change the build uh, to, to to suit the engine. I think they would uh, create an engine which is uh, um, in terms of its. Uh, uh, you know, like they've done with the Alps engine, where they've taken the Trent 1000 and they've uh, they've fitted it with the carbon blade and the and, uh, and the carbon uh, fan casing. That alone, if you if you took a Trent 900, modified it up to the uh, the ultra fan specifics, um, you'd still have uh, enough ground clearance. I imagine, I imagine. Um, so, but but uh, but a good point, a good point. Uh, all the same, uh, Nick. Um, so what else have we got? Um, what have we got? Ultrafan is going to be scalable from low thrust to big thrust. Indeed, it is Tim Rotunda. They are going to, um, uh, create a number of different options and variants for it. Uh, the Gulf Air 787s are in storage due to still, um, uh, let's just have a look at these. Uh, we saw, didn't we, um, didn't we, uh, Three Gulf Air. Didn't we see one of the Gulf Air uh, 787s at, at Renton? Was it? 
It was delivered while it was we delivered were there. while we were there. Three Gulf Air seven eight sevens are in stu- in store. Uh, sorry, Plainfield. in Plainfield, Sorry, uh, three Gulf Air seven eight sevens are in storage due to still awaiting engine solutions for the Trent one thousand. Expected return to service in July in June this year. So far, the engines are only flying eight hundred hours before replacement. Wow, is that what's happened with that Dreamliner at Heathrow with with Virgin? With Virgin. That is that is that that kind of answers it then. Wow, only flying eight hundred hours before replacement. That's insane, man. Is that is that linked to the original Trent one thousand issues with the um uh, um was it the um turbine blades? I think it was the uh, high pressure turbine blades or the low pressure turbine blades, whichever they are. I don't know which ones they were, but I think it was the ones that they grew. Didn't Rolls-Royce grow them with a a very interesting technology? Anyway, let's get off of the Rolls-Royce thing because we've got to carry on. Um, And we're going to jump to the first, um, the the, the main feature of the night, um, uh, of our Friday night. It's all a little bit mishmash, isn't it? But we get through it anyway. It's a bit like walking through treacle, isn't it? In a dream, you know, walking through water. Um, right. So we um, earlier on, we um, we uh, showed you the airport. Let me come all the way through here. I need to go to that screen now. I'll pull that over there. Hold on a minute. I'll just bring that over there. There we go. Uh, so I don't need that anymore at the moment. Anyway, I hope not. <laughs> Captain Man is here. Good day to you. Because uh, you're a Trent 1000 issues with turbine blades, then compressor blades. Blimey. Um, organic engines, Avro Arrow. That's what everyone's uh, going towards, isn't it? Um, Aiden Campbell, ultra fan, world's largest uh, jet engine and the fan diameter 140 inches world's most powerful jet engine the ge9x has a fan diameter of 134 so she's six inches yeah it's, uh, it's a fair old size isn't it hey, 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 hey. Um, we're six inches longer than you are son uh, i've spec the ultra fan for my 757x designated addition to the gen x uh, designed in addition to the Gen X. Okay. Uh, well, there's, a, there's an aircraft that would definitely um, fit a bigger engine underneath it, isn't it? The 757. But we go, we do get, tend to go on about that. Um, and something that we can talk about. I don't have a problem talking about it. It's just uh, it's interesting stuff, isn't it? Um, see what we've got here. Um, can we have a mid-session interval in the future? I, use, I need to use the facilities and get... Okay, <laughs> Scotty too. <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, do, do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to do a little bit of that? Do you want to put the intro music? Yeah. Should we? Should we? Should we play the theme tune? Hold on a minute. Let me do it. Let me do it. Play, play the theme tune. Okay. We're gonna uh, drop the mic and give us uh, give us a three minute break, five minute break, folks, or a little bit less than that, maybe, just so that we can uh, you know get on with the show because it's not gonna be too late. We've already we were already late tonight, so here we go. Right, is he back yet? Are you done? We have to run to the end of the garden. Oh, 
Oh, that was close, mate. That was really Ooh. close. He's down there. Oh, he's down there. Okay, right, that's long enough. Okay, so we this should fade out now, shouldn't it? If I pause it. Awesome, there we go. Okay, so um, the A380, ladies and gentlemen. We've had, uh, we, 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 we um, our, our viewing numbers always, always go up when there's a 380 inbound. Um, it is funny, but then they sort of like stick around when, when people are like, oh, wow, there's going to be any more, you know, uh, which ine inevitably at London Heathrow there is. So, um, but the amazing thing is, and, and what we've talked about uh, literally since I started Big Jet TV, I remember when, um, when, I, um, when I first started, uh, I kind of made it up myself that if you remember if you were if you were with me uh, all those years ago um i'm i kind of made it up myself that the reason why the aircraft didn't have outboard reversers because the a380 only has two uh reverses the inboard engines are only used for reversing um i uh i sort of like um uh, uh, i thought well you know what um it kind of makes sense that because it's so wide, the um, the outboard engines, if they were to um, have reverses on them, uh, they're very close to the edge of the runway. The runways are really wide, man. I and mean, we're talking about 100 feet, these runways. You know, um, it's an 80-foot wingspan on these. We're talking about 100-foot big runways are around about 100 feet wide. Um, so more than enough to cater for a, for, for a big aircraft like this. But um, the, the 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 other the other thing was that as they're so close to the outer part of the runway, that the outer part of the runway is where there's most of the debris and and uh, and, and grit and stuff like that. So uh, so that was uh, the reason why uh, they opted for two reverses and and uh, for the inboards only. Uh, and then, of course, um, as the years went on, I kept saying this all the time when people were asking, "Why is it only got two reverses?" And then, um, as it went on, I want to, yeah, yeah. Can I just say thank you to Clive, by the way, um, who sent us an email about about um, uh, there's been criticism with uh, James Asquith in terms of the uh, of, of of the A380 and the use of it and the fact that it's going to be very difficult to uh, to fill it full of passengers. And, uh, and apparently the average cost of an A380 was twice that of a 777-300. Well, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 all I'm saying is that that's an A380 that's 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 now defunct and uh, nobody wants it anymore. So you could, he might have snapped it up for a bargain. I don't know um, if there are 777-800s, uh, sorry, 777-300s out in the uh, out in the desert as well that are uh, that are that are that are available. Uh, that being the case, that's definitely the one that I would have gone for. Um, I'm pretty sure that there are a number of triple seven three hundreds out in the Mojave Desert that are uh, that are that, that are um, uh, not flying and uh, perfectly airworthy and um, would be a lot cheaper to put back into service than something like that. But anyway, I think he may. I think maybe what what has happened is that he's sort of like. Um, He's committed to it, and now he's sort of like in on it. You know, um, no one would have blamed him if he had said, "Look, you know what? Um, it's not really good uh, economics, and the and 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 the footprint's quite big, isn't it? You know, uh, big gas guzzling thing, um, a big gas, a big gas guzzling thing. That's 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 uh, not economical in terms of its." Uh, you know, um, fuel burn compared to, you know, the new modern jets or, or a twin jet, for example, that would use half the amount of fuel. You know, 777-300 has got a big capacity for passengers, not far off of what the, uh, the A380's got. Um, and, of course, the operational cost for the 380, parking it, uh, the fuel costs, uh, the, the, the whole thing about it would... Um, would um would, would be a, a massive challenge is the way I look at it. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the existing operators out there, you know, the guys at, uh, at Etihad and, and Qatar couldn't get a Qatar today, by the way, um, and uh, and British Airways, Emirates, even and Lufthansa, uh, they're they're all looking for uh, the, looking for if you're looking for a way out, um, they're looking for the way out, aren't they? Uh, literally, but. 
new aircraft uh, deliveries are massively delayed at the moment. So uh, they're just going to have to wait for the time being. Uh, Emirates have already said that they're going to be flying their 380s till the 2040s, I think it was. Uh, Absolutely insane. So first, what we're going to talk about with the A380 today, folks, is the stopping power of the A380. Now, Don't forget, we've got three elements here. We've got those inboard reversers, which very interestingly enough, uh, James, um, who's a a 787 pilot, told me today, very interesting factoid, was that the um, the, uh, 380 engines, the the likes of these big, uh, the Trent 8, uh, the Trent 9s, um, the 1000s, the XWBs, that kind of stuff, um, these things have got more... Um, thrust, get this, when the, when we say they're on idle, when they come past and it's just like, shh, you know, there's no, you can more hear the brakes than you can the engines, you know, uh, because obviously British Airways, what they tend to do is they tend to um, run the aircraft long um, and 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 um, uh, think of the engine, um, life of the engine. That's what's critical uh, is the life of the engine. So the more you use the reverse thrusters, um, the, um, the the more wear and tear it puts on the engines. And as a result of that, that's why they uh, they run them uh, hardly at all. But apparently, uh, these big modern engines have got, when they're on idle, so basically it's still pushing out air from the engine, but we don't, it's not that big thrust that we hear when they really do pull the reverses up. But when they're on idle, where they just open the doors and there's a, there is a, um because I said to him the the doors are open but nothing's happening he's like no 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 far from it there's a lot of air still still being uh, transferred out out of those um out of those ducts and um you're talking about as much idle thrust on these modern jets as you would do on a Trident on full power on takeoff full power uh, which you know when you consider the size of these engines. And uh, and the Trident, you know, th- those those elements would definitely come together. I can see that as a factoid that definitely works in my mind. So anyway, uh, the stopping power, obviously, the reverse thrusters on the on the on the on the inboard engines. Now you've also got these huge, ginormous uh, ground spoilers um, on the on the wing as well, which we're going to show you a video of. Massive, great big things when they come up. Of course, the inboard spoilers. Uh, because they're directly above the main gear with the wing gear, uh, it's got obviously the body gear, which we're going to show you in a second. But the main gear, the main outdoor uh, outboard gear on the wings, the, all that pressure uh, from the from the from the from the the, the 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 speed of the aircraft pushing on those brakes is pushing the aircraft down onto the ground and maximizing its braking, as well as also the outboard spoilers as well doing their job. I mean, if you just put your hand, put your hand out of a car window and do that, uh, you'll find it'll, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, use it as a flap like that. It'll either go up or it'll go down, you know, and then when you do it like that, you'll get a lot of resistance. So that's, and that's just your hand um, with these massive, great big flap, uh, um, um, uh, boards, as, as, as some pilots call them, uh, the ground spoilers. They also use these in flight as well when they're uh, when they're approaching. Sometimes when they're in in quite sort of like uh, dodgy conditions, you'll see the the um, the flaps, uh, the 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 um, the the, the uh, speed brakes uh, as they are up there as well, because you'll sometimes see the spa- the, the spoilers coming up on a, on descent as well to bleed a bit of speed off, um, uh, to, to bring the aircraft down to, to the right speed that they want. And then they come back down and then they, and then of course the little tiny movements of them that you'll see on one of the videos as well to sort of like uh, to keep the wing from twisting because it's such a big wing. You need, you can't rely on just the outboard ailerons, which is unbelievable when you see the, uh, when you see the ailerons um, dancing away on the outboard section of the wing. Uh, but as soon as this thing hits the deck, bang, up come the boards. You've got those. You've got the inboard uh, um, reverses on the engines. And what you've also got is, um, is it 18 wheels? Uh, let me just have a think about it. Is it 18 or 16? I think it's 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I think it's, I think it's 18 wheels. I think it's 22 wheeler uh, down on the main gear. Uh, 18 of those wheels are braking wheels. And uh, what is fascinating about that is what, we, what we've seen before is the actual braking system itself in terms of how many units there are to each brake. 
work. You know, on one wheel, there could be anything up to six brake discs and actuators and pistons that push uh, everything together and give it an immense amount of braking power just on one wheel. So um, the um, the braking power of the wheels and the and the and the ground spoilers and the reversers. Uh, are, are more than enough to bring that thing to a stop. Now, what's interesting is the the, the as far as I'm aware, the truth behind the uh, the inboard reverses is that um, Airbus actually, and this is on. Um, I think I read this. Where did I read this? Um, uh, da, 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 da. Um, yeah, that was from 2011, around when it was launched, I think, um, which uh, took me to another one by Kiora. Um, the, uh, but, but then, the um, and here is the word from Chris Lowe and Andrew Curran from Simple Flying that basically says exactly what I've been saying for the last couple of years, uh, two or three years, I don't know how long I've been saying it for, but the reason was is that the, when they originally designed the A380, believe it or not, folks, they designed it with no reverses at all because they were so convinced that the brakes and the power of the spoilers uh, would be far and en- far and enough um, to stop that thing um, uh, just so long as obviously the runway was the right length. Um, but um, but I think the um, as far as I'm aware, the uh, the airlines or the major operators said, "Nah, you know what, mate? Uh, I'd rather have some reverses on there. You make you know the pilots would be happy about that if we had some reverses. Okay, it's going to add a little bit more weight, but I think we I think we'd all feel a lot safer if they had reverses on them. So uh, they put reverses. They they met them halfway and said, right, well we can definitely say that you'll only need inboard reverses uh, because you've got enough power there. Trust me. And these things, when they come in and they sing at London Heathrow, this is amazing. Watch this video, folks. This is um, this is from our videos. Uh, this is from um, a wet ones. I, I think they're both wet operations. This is where you get to see the, op- the the reverses in operation when the runway is wet. So you get to see uh, how it how it operates because it's like being in a wind tunnel with all the um, the atmospherics. So uh, check this video out. That's not in order. Oh god. Okay. That's the order. <laughs> Okay, um, because I've got so, so stopping power. Check out these examples A380 landing and braking in London Heathrow. Play our video. She's got a mega wing, is the next one. Oh, it's on. It's our video, isn't it? I know. Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I think you might have. Oh, really? There we go. This is it. Okay, okay. Here we go. Check this out, folks. We're going to leave the leave the mic on so we can all enjoy it together. But turn this up, crank it up, folks, because I've uh, got a couple of really good examples of the thrusters and the brakes and the boards and everything together working in unison on these two jets. Here we go. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. He should light it up. She should light it up. They should light it up. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. Can you rewind it? Can you rewind it? Can you let me do it? Can you rewind it, please? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. He should light it up. She should light it up. They should light it up. Get that big wing losing all that lift. Here we go. Straight on it. Yeah. Look. Yeah, it can't be yeah. 100 feet wide, that runway. Yeah, here we go. Here goes another one. He's long. He's long, this one. Look at the board. Look at the boards.
And that is so cool. I still go on, go. Still singing. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was a bit loud in the mic there. I realise I was <laughs> Stay there, man. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, how was that, man? How was that? Um, now, so there we go. That's that. That's the that's the whole thing about the uh, the the reverses, um, which is just incredible. The Trent nine hundreds or the P uh, the 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 GPW seventy two hundreds. I think. Um, could you imagine if the three eighty didn't have reverses for the uh, Qantas Flight three hundred thirty two? Yeah, indeed. Um, which would have been quite. Um, Quite scary, Jordan Charlie saying that about that one, uh, which is also interesting because um, the, I saw a, a very interesting um, uh, blade off. In fact, I've got it on there. Haven't we got it on here? Have we got the bl the blade blowing? I hope we have. Did we get that on there? Um, I've lined up all the ones that you. Okay, overload brake test for certification channel GM Panzal Panazalo. Yes, I've got that one. Okay, here we go. Here's another one, folks. Okay, hold fire. Yeah, let me just have a look at this one. <laughs> i got to find the right one. Yeah, this is interesting, this. Um, this is basically um, a test with Honeywell Dunlop Alliance. Um, so obviously the braking system, I'm guessing, with Honeywell. Um, no, that's not it. No, it's not it. It's not it. No. no I think that might be. That's it. No, no, that's no, Airbus. it's first flight. No, that's not it. Well, I can try it, can't I? No, that's not it. Did we even... That's it, that's it, that's it. Don't play it yet, don't play it yet. Okay. okay, so this is a flight test configuration overweight landing um, with Dunlop. Uh, aerospace dynamometer uh, test date 20th of october 2004 um now i just want to i just want to um just quickly just let me see the oh. what wait a minute oh. oh no what what's going on there it's brought the wrong wait a minute oh. Oh no, wait a minute, wait a minute. It keeps going to the top of the thingamajig. Um, wait a minute, brake check, huge wing spoilers, overload, brake test, there we go. Okay, Honeywell, um, I can't get it. Okay, let me just bring it, I just, wanted, I just wanted to, here we go, here we go, here we go. Right, here are the, the, the details on it, because it's going to come up and you're not. You're going to go like, hold on a minute, what's that, what's that? Dynanometer energy, 125.2 megajoules, is that right, MJ? Uh, brake application speed, 90 metres per second. That's about 200 mile an hour or something like that, isn't it? 90 metres per second? Um uh, but anyway, stopping distance, 1,120 metres. Uh, mean deceleration, 3.62 metres per second. Energy absorption rate, 5.04 megajoules. So this is basically uh, the um, the braking system and uh, and tyre system combined going through a very big overload um, test um, obviously, during the um, development stages of the aircraft. Hit it, GP. Yeah. Got a fire extinguisher, John. Go on, on a minute, just down a cup of tea. Uh, you might want to put your tea down, mate. 
<laughs> um, right, okay, Jelly. Um, thank you. Um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna um, just um, have a quick one. What have you got next, Jelly? You got I'm having a clue because you missed okay. it. Okay, yeah, I have, I have, I really have, I have, I really have missed up, messed, messed up the um, the order, haven't I? Uh, overload. Ta- I she's wearing, watch this video. Travel tire. Travel tire. Which ones have you got next? What have you got next? Okay, I've removed the ones that we've used. But I don't know Flaps sound. sound. Oh, man alive. A380 spoilers while landing. Oh, man. Hold on a minute. There's a few here that we haven't got on there, mate. Because you said we were... Did you got the landing gear brake check, a uh, 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 swing check? Airbus A380 landing gear drop test. Does it? Would it help if I if I if I just quickly found it on here? Would it work or not? No. It won't. Okay. Okay. Screen. Okay. Yeah. I I need to I need to perfect this a little bit more, folks, because uh, um, it is a little bit Heath Robinson, but because uh, we've got a lot of stuff that's not in there that I've got on my phone here, Jilly. Landing gear swing check. Uh, World of Aviation. Yes, I've got that. Okay, can we can we play that one, <laughs> please? Yeah, that's landing gear drop test. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, we took that one out, didn't we? Next one started playing. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's the one. You 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 might have a couple of them. I don't know, but um, but here we go, folks. So this is the a standby. This is the A three eighty um swing check where they jack the whole aircraft up on on literally on jacks um so that the undercarriage can swing freely. So they do an undercarriage swing check basically this is what they had to do to all the air, all the a380s that were coming back in the service because all that weight on those on those on that undercarriage uh, over all that time without the aircraft moving um obviously uh, caused um would cause um components to not so much seize but very sort of like they're really pushed together for a great amount of time just to be able to move them you know, to, to, to get that movement going again. So, you know, the, the system is very, um, is very efficient. Um, and a lot of it works by gravity, of course, when it drops. But in order to make sure it doesn't just flop down like that, it, uh, it has actuators on it, which is why you hear that noise and the big clonking and the, and the gear doors going up and all that. So have a look at this. This is pretty cool. And you can really hear this as well when you're on board the aircraft, the big slam as the doors come up. But this is obviously inside a uh, maintenance hangar. Okay, here we go. Body gear is at the back. Here we go. Wing gear down first. Now, they'll leave the back ones to come down until the doors have gone up because they'll cause a lot of disruption in airflow uh, for the back gear. So now the doors are up, bang, the back ones come down. Look at that, 35 tonnes, ladies and gentlemen. And it's just the two back wheels of those, of the, of those, those tri-sets that you see there. They're the only ones that are non-braked. So four, eight, 12, 16. So 16 braking wheels, 20, um, 20 wheels all together. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you to him for uh, for that. Was that um, Ships You Should Know, Julie? Oh, that's pretty cool. What was that? You said it was... Um... World of Aviation. Yes. Let me just double check that I that was that one. No, it wasn't. Oh. Okay, so that was somebody else. Um Every time I come back on my phone, it goes back to the top of the screen. So I have to scroll all the way down, remembering where I was. Okay. Jilly, I think we, 
I think we definitely need to do a like a full sort of like you know. Dude, we did. I know, I know, I know. But what happened was, I, I got too involved. I got too involved with doing it myself, didn't I? Yes. I should have just let yes. you. It's okay. <laughs> oh my god. I just want okay. to take a bit of pressure. Okay. Jerry, right, Jerry, what have we got left anyway to play out? But okay. we've we've done okay. that. Okay. Right. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left. Okay. Seven left. Okay. All right. Go on then. They're all on cool. your bloody... I don't know, are they? Oops. They're okay. All on your list. Channel of the week. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. Look at these ones here. So. Okay. So let's take that calling breaks out in Frankfurt because we definitely took that one out, didn't we? Calling breaks in Frankfurt. We took that one out, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I did I'm something not right. Put... <laughs> I'm not going to put the credit overlay up. Okay. Because you've completely messed up me. Okay. Okay. I had them all in order. See, we didn't. Well, you haven't got all this credit. one in Asiana pre delivery brake tests. Chat channel ships, you should I've know. I've got one called Stunning Asiana. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. what they're called so I could identify them. Is that by, uh, is that by ships you should know in the yes. night? Yes. Uh, no, ships you should know. Run it, run it. Watch this beautiful. Um, obviously, when they were testing the A380s in their, um, in their, in their, well, like you know, um, at, at uh, Toulouse. I think I'm pretty sure this is Toulouse. Um, but um, but absolutely amazing, man. A rejected takeoff. Watch this for how efficient the braking. This guy's at full tilt, man. He sent it. And uh, and then he's like bang straight on the reverses, full rejected takeoff, um, massively on the brakes. Everything's maximum, um, and the engines just listen. To, everything is just uh, everything is just big in this uh, in this video, uh, which is just amazing. By um, uh, ships, you should know the channel. Ships, you should know. Don't try and say that when you've had a few. <laughs> Mind you, I've known a few ships before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, watch this. Look at that, man. Three eighty Emirates. Three eighty is at Toulouse. There's the delivery centre, is it? And it's in the wet, which is even better. Oh my goodness, man. Look at this. Oh, it's up the other end, isn't it? It's up the other end. It's going out towards the viewing area, I think. Oh, I don't know though. Hold on a minute. There's the belugas. Wow, look at that. Nice. That's why, folks, the back wheels always look white and, and, and nice and... Here we go. Watch this, watch this. Oh, hold on a minute. That's not to lose, is it? Not with a great big. Where did they do that? Hamburg. Oh, Sam Beck's Hamburg. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sam. Here we go. Yeah, that's working. How gnarly is that? What's next, GP? What's next on your list? How gnarly is that, folks? Oh, it's a shame we kind of missed those days, isn't it? We were just a little bit too late, or were we? We had a chance to, because uh, we started in 2017, so, you know, were they sort of like, you know, what was the market trend then with the, the big twins were coming you know they were they were on paper, weren't they? Okay, thanks, Jilly. Uh, they were on paper, and um, you know, uh, but but it's a shame that we kind of missed the opportunity to go to Hamburg and and do some good stuff there. Um, one good thing in Hamburg, by the way, is uh, the um, miniature Wonderland, ladies and gentlemen. What's next on your list, Jilly? Um, well, I'll take your pick, to be honest. <laughs> okay. But do you want to start where we was going to start? No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, what's that A380 landing gear test? 
Can you play that one? It's not the one we've just done. Oh, yeah, it's another one. Another A380 swing check, folks. So you can see where the jacks are now. Um, so this is suspended uh, off the ground, this A380. Just absolutely incredible, man. Um, watch this. Yeah, that 380 was uh, was it was just a brake check, wasn't it? Brake and no reverses, all brakes and spoilers. Just incredible, man. Uh, just goes to show how powerful that braking system is. Okay, GP. Listen to the carbon doors clanking. It's Thai Airways, isn't it? We've seen that so many times coming towards us at Heathrow. Yeah, it's Steve. Gear up. All goes up together. Yeah, man. Look at that. How cool is that, man? How impressive is it to put it up on jacks and all, mate? Thank you, Chili. Awesome, 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 awesome. Um, what we've got next? Um, okay, well, I think um, I've got some other stuff that I'm going to play. Oh, Jenny, can you just try and find this for me, please? Because um, I, I I didn't put it in, but I want to. Um, I want to. It's chat, Jenny. Is he there? Yeah. Hello, mate. You come say hello. I'm coming to spaceship. You're going to ride in the space. You've got a little helmet on. Oh, he's not coming oh, yeah. There we are. Do you want some of this? Oh, what's this, Chachi? Here we go. Here we go. Come on. He's a good boy, Z. He's a good boy. Come on, there's a good boy, Z. Come on, there's a good boy, Z. There's a good boy, Z. Yeah, so um, this is a good one. Uh, uh, can you just search this one, Jenny? Rolls Royce, RR, Rolls Royce, yeah. Okay, we're just gonna. I just want to play this one out before we finish, folks. But anyway, um, basically, what we've what we're discussing here, what we have discussed, is the amazing braking power of the A380 and the reason why she only has inboard reverses. So now you know. Um, as far as I'm aware, that's the official word. Um, it was it was uh, originally my um, my thought that it was uh, because of the outboard engines kicking up loads of dust. And there is even something online from about 2012 or 2011 about that, uh, saying that it's that's the reason why. But obviously later on, it was uh, that was poo pooed, and um, the, um, the 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 real reason. I believe was given by Airbus themselves. Um, so what an amazing story. Another story in history. Evans, deep bath. Have you got it, Jimmy? Found it? What? You said search Rolls Royce. Okay, Rolls Royce Trent 900 blade off test. Hello, mate. You see his little tail there, look, look his little tail, look. look. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go for it, Jenny? So can, the people are waiting. Oh, they want to see Chachi. No, you won't. You won't. Pick, you won't. You won't. You try and pick they him up. That's it. He's It'd a good like boy. That. Yes, you are. He's a good boy. No. <laughs> a, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit um, E. Robinson in it, folks. But hey, you know, it's live, isn't it? Um, it's all well and good when you can uh, when you can edit stuff, isn't it? Just yeah, saying. sorry. Is this it here? Oh, that one. It's a lady Watch driving to work. Yes, it's the lady driving to work. Um, what a job, man! What a job! This is great. This is great. Watch this, folks. I mean, you a lot. Of, whoa, 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 slow down. A lot of people would have seen this 
um, online, whether it's whether it's this one or whether it's a Gen X, a General Electric one, or whatever it might be. Uh, there are other examples online, but this is pretty amazing when you see this. What is interesting, though, and, and a lot of people will say on air, um, will be that um, uh, the fan casing actually uh, did not survive on the Qantas jet. Um, and how lucky were those folks on that jet? Because everything, basically, the whole front end was gone. Um, so can you imagine the amount of debris that was thrown out by that engine and the fan casing um, and how lucky they were to just have damage to the leading edge slats, uh, the leading edge of the wing. Um, and other than that, there were probably a couple of dinks and dents here and there and all that. But luckily that the uh, the horizontal stabilizer wasn't hit, the, uh, the tail wasn't hit, uh, valuable um, uh, hydraulic lines or, uh, or whatever it might be were not hit, et cetera, et cetera. So um, very, very fortunate um, that they uh, that, that, that they had as little damage as they did. Okay, GP, are you ready to play it out? This is really interesting, this one, folks. Watch it. It's not very long, but uh, just watch it anyway. Here in Hull, Nottinghamshire, another test engine will soon be a smoking ruin deliberately destroyed as part of a dramatic and crucial safety test. It's an important milestone for the entire A380 project. And as engineer Hilary Barton travels to the test, she admits some nerves. I must say I've got a few butterflies at the moment, but basically um, everybody's done the preparation and it's just now a matter of, of getting on and doing the test. Obviously before the the engine starts you're sitting there just kind of hoping it all go well but uh, just really waiting for it to happen there every few years a fan blade will fail in a jet engine somewhere in the world a rare but violent event that must not put lives in danger at the root of the colored blade is an explosive charge with the engine at full power it will be detonated releasing the blade with astonishing force. Whatever happens, the blade must not be allowed to burst out of the engine, where, in real life, it could do serious damage to the rest of the aircraft. In a room 200 yards away, watching via a video link, are 25 key personnel, each hoping the test goes as planned. In the split second the blade is released, the engine must successfully contain an enormous amount of energy. This is a very, this is a very violent um, test. This thing is spinning around. It's at full power, so you've got uh, the forces on on the blade are, are quite are quite feeble. significant. It's like having a, a locomotive uh, hanging on on that on that blade. So you're actually having to contain the energy of, of that system. So there's a lot of energy involved in the design and containment of the, of the blade. I mean, the whole, you know, the whole engine will get a huge, big shape. Damn right. As ever, the size of the A380 increases the challenge. The bigger the engine, the bigger the blades, and the greater the energy released if one were to fail. Spinning at 3,000 revolutions per minute, the blades experience a force of more than 7,000 times their own weight. So everything is done to make them as light and as strong as possible. A top secret process rolls the plates from ultra strong, ultra light titanium alloy. Same to save further weight, stuff. the blades are heated to 900 degrees in a furnace until they are softened. And then the gas is pumped into cavities inside the blade, inflating <sighs> it like a long, thin balloon. Amazing balloon. The result is a hollow part curved in three directions for aerodynamic efficiency. Supremely strong, yet light enough for someone to pick up and move quite easily. Each one costs the same as a luxury car. And a full set of 24 are about to be destroyed in the name of safety. Fire it up. Jane of the Skies. As the critical cool, test man. of the Airbus A380's engine gets Listen underway, to this thing wind it's up, run mate. for five minutes at low power, so final checks can be made. 
The main concern is that as the blade is blown free, the casing around the fan absorbs the huge impact and prevents potentially lethal shrapnel from escaping. Mm. High-speed film cameras are used to analyze the action. And at last, the throttles are opened and the engine brought to its full awesome power. This is what it feels like to be inside a building 200 yards away from a nine million pound blade off event. Who's gonna flinch? Hey, flinched. Look at that, mate. Look at that. Oh. Yeah. Blade off testing is normally top secret. But for the first time, Rolls-Royce have released this footage. Although the engine was totally destroyed, the fan case did its job, and no large lumps of metal were ejected. Until the Qantas fly. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this. Well done, well done, John. Look at John. All right, everyone down the pub. Jay, can you. Uh, oh, that was an expensive five minutes. Oh, I don't know. For Hilary Barton, it's been a good day. I feel very relieved. Obviously, it's gone well. We've had a good test, and it's all credit to the well guys. Well done, Hilary. Yes, we've, we've, got, we've got a successful test under our belt. So, uh, awesome. Relieved and really but pleased. She didn't sleep the night before. Okay, thank you, Hillary, and uh, everybody at Rolls Royce. That was fantastic, wasn't that brilliant? Um, right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we are nearing the end of uh, the 380 evening, um, and uh, we're going to jump to. Uh, we've got some other stuff we're going to play out for you on on future shows as well, folks. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, but we've also got. Um, so that's a good one. Um, but but for another show, for another show, it's all right. It's all right. Okay, um, C check, Nat Geo. Um, okay, so um, this is quite interesting, folks. Remember the olden days, um, and there and there are interestingly enough, um, our good friend Paul from Aviation Retail Direct, where all these models come from, by the way, folks. He um, he told me a funny story. Well, not he told me a story today. Um, he went and picked up. Uh, the things that people have in their in their uh, in their lofts, you wouldn't believe it. Um, this fella rang him up and he said, uh, or it was the missus, I think it was the missus rang him up and said, uh, we've got a couple of aeroplanes that you might be interested in. And he's like, oh yeah, what's that then? Because Paul's got some big models in his store. Like we're talking about X travel agents models. You remember the remember the ones with the cutaways and stuff like that. Some real spectacular stuff. Um and, and from time to time these sort of like appear um, in car boot sales or uh or, or or whatever online and so on and so forth. Anyway, so um Paul's uh, rocked up at this this fella's house or this woman's house, they, these people's house down in Burgess Hill in Sussex. And um He's uh, he's gone upstairs and he's and, and 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 he's come down and he's like he's got this um this beautiful boac and it must be because um it didn't have any hf aerials on it I said you've got to put hf aerials on it um but it was like a prototype almost boac beautifully sort of like you know it's got the it's got the cutaway. Uh, you can see all inside the cabin, up, up into the flight deck, all the different coloured seating and all the and all the, the stewardesses as they were then, you know. And uh, oh, just an absolutely beautiful uh, uh, model. And then he said, and the fella said, uh, I've got another one, you know. He says, what, another jumbo? He says, no, 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 I've got another model. He goes upstairs, comes down. It's an MD-83 in, um, what did I say it was? Air Tours. I think it was Air Tours. I wasn't there. Um, Air Tour, I think it was Air Tours colours. Um, uh, 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 and I believe that uh, he had it and he was, he, he had a, new, a, a travel agent and he had it and, and, it, and, and they went out of business so he never used it. So he stuck it up in the loft and uh, amazing, um, amazing, beautiful aeroplanes. Um, but um, why that's got anything to do with what I'm just bringing you up on uh, in terms of the, um, 
the old stuff. Jilly, we asked Jay, what size model is the A380? Has it stains international? Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's um, well, that one, that one that you're looking at there. Uh, the one closest to us is the A380 in um, one two hundredth scale. The other ones are all one four hundredth scale. I bring in a two hundredth scale every week just because uh, it's 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 quite detailed. And like I said, you know, good idea is to you know if you're gonna if you're just gonna um, splash out on one aircraft. Um, maybe, maybe um, instead of another aircraft, buy some diorama stuff. Uh, Sixty-five quid, I think that uh, that tug is amazing detail as well. Um, have you got my uh, got my? Hold on a minute. Let me show that. Uh, let me show that tug. Hold on a minute. Let me just. Um, show you the detail on that tug. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? Is it gonna is it gonna focus? Yeah, look at that. Look at that. And the uh, and the and the and the uh the all this stuff here is just fantastic. The way that, they, that this guy in, in Japan or China or whatever has crafted this, it's just a thing of beauty, isn't it? I mean, obviously, you know, it's a it's um uh, a die set where he's where he's created the dies and he's stamped out the uh, the tin. But even so, man, look at the, the the detailing there and the you know the 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 um the air conditioning uh, pipes and the air conditioning unit, um, the walk bridge. You know, uh, again that piece down there, which is uh, which is beautifully fabricated, man. I mean, just everything about it is just fantastic. And uh, I've got to take my hat off to him, you know, um, for, for for creating something. So it's, you might be want to, might maybe want to consider, you know, instead of buying a whole load of aircraft, just buy one aircraft and make a little diorama out of it. I don't know. Um, but uh, but there we go. Uh, that is the um, the A three eighty, and that is the um, the um, topic of tonight's show. Um, and uh, but what we're going to do first is um, what last nearly. <laughs> First, <laughs> not doing this again. <laughs> um, this is a good one. So, um, uh, back in the olden days, uh, London Heathrow, obviously, they had what was known as the um, what was the agreement, the Cranford Agreement. Um, which was just literally a, a gentleman's handshake between Heathrow and the local community and all that kind of thing. We're gonna we're gonna plan to do this. We're gonna make sure that we uh, have aircraft going out at certain times of the day, at different directions, so as to minimise the amount of disruption. Um, and this is definitely uh, more to do with back in those days with the old DC8s and the 707s and the VC10s and all that. What's this lovely old video uh, from old Londonian Heathrow uh, when they had the big star of David runways, like loads of like 23s and all that kind of stuff going on. And I think um, the, the, the gentleman says that they, what they, and this is a, this is a, uh, this is a noise test that they did, uh, obviously with a, with a, with a, with a set of microphones and all that. Uh, but what they also did was they injected water into the engines to um, to maximise the the the, the um, that you could see them uh, these engines. Which is uh, to be honest with you, I've seen quite a few uh, departures of seven oh sevens that look like this. So watch this, folks. This um, get get your inhaler ready. Put it that way. That's it. That's it. Here we go. Splendid. where Ministry of Civil Aviation experts on the ground with What's this? apparatus to measure the noise. <laughs> the sails were caused by water being injected into the engines to give extra power during the takeoff of the car. Oh, extra power. Wow, look at that. Go on, son. Listen to this. Go on, old boy. It would be back then, wouldn't it? Go on, old chap. Here we bally well go. Yeah, listen to that, man. Oh. Oh. What's that? It's only taxing. Absolutely fantastic. 
Wow, man, old Pratt and Whitney's, look at that. Is that with the hush kit system on them? Look at that old lovely old Vita comet over there, man. Okay, GP, that's it, thank you. Uh, that lovely old comet over there. How about that, folks? Um, wow, that was absolutely incre incredible, man. Uh, Travolta piloting um, HGC. Right, folks, we're going to jump now to channel of the week, and then we are done. But uh, I want to give these this guy a shout out. Um, now... There's a lot of videos that we play out, folks. That we give the credit to the to the to, to whose whose channel that we've got it from. Now, whether they, it's their original footage that they shot and that they've uh, taken from DVD or, or or from old cine film or whatever it is, and they converted it to digital and they've put it on YouTube. Fantastic that they have done. Um, or whether they've got it from other places, it happens a lot where people bring stuff in. They, they sometimes credit, they sometimes don't. Um, it's, it's all about etiquette, isn't it, online? If you're gonna if you're gonna use somebody else's footage, then most definitely give them a credit um, and uh, and go and subscribe to their channel. Uh, and this channel of the week is from a, a fellow called Patrick Variki. Um, I don't know if he's Dutch. Um, or Varik, uh, V-E-R-E-E-K-E. -E -E. There he is, Patrick Varik, uh, 6654. Now this, he's done a lot of stuff. Um, go and check his channel out if you like your old stuff. Um, this is unbelievable from Ostend, um, which used to be a very, 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 very busy airport. IL-76s, 62s, um, 124s, um, uh, multiple 707s, DC-8s. Uh, all big stuff like that, um, which noisy and loud and all day long it, it apparently happened. Um, and, of course, now you've got your Leipzigs, you've got your Hans, um, you've got your, um, you know, those airfields which are sort of like now taking it, you know, um, uh, uh, some are taking more than others, et cetera, et cetera. But this, a lovely old 707, man, this geezer, uh, or whoever's flying this aeroplane, he's just knows his way round Ostend. And you think initially that when he's taxiing towards us, when you think he powers up there just for a second, you think, flipping heck, he's going out, he's going straight out. He's only taxiing up to the turning point. And uh, and then when he goes out, it's just amazing. So Patrick Variki, uh, this is old stuff from o Ostend. This is a lovely old 707 that we're going to see here, a big freighter. Um, watch this and crank it up as well, folks. Look at that, man. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Look at that man. He's fully laden, isn't he? Looks heavy, bouncing all just that just looks heavy. Here we go, here we go, easy son. <laughs> well, you think he's coming up to line up and just take straight off, but watch this. <laughs> Just brilliant because he's taxiing up the runway for a full length, I think. Insane, man. Insane. Proper freight dog. Watch this. Watch this. He's nearly up on two wheels on the uh, when it when he turns. Look at imagine living there, man. 
There we go. Here we go. Go on, son. He's on the power on the turn. <laughs> what a pleasure. Look at this thing. just flat out man wow man oh brake dust and all look at that no wonder i'm not surprised there's brake dust to be honest with you man that was just spectacular and that guy folks patrick variki has got a lot of other stuff from ostend and other cool stuff on his channel so give him a sub give him a like and um say thank you because uh, we uh, we value that old stuff on big jet tv and we'll do more of that we'll play more of that stuff out uh, in the future as well um but that is it folks um how long how have we done today then jilly oh man you're watching another video while well, they can't watch it Hey, whoa! Hold on a minute, just rewind that. It's IAS Cargo, mate. Just rewind that. Did that say IAS Cargo, man? It bleeding well looked like it because I know they had 7Os. Wait a minute. Is that it is. Yes. It is, man. Oh, mate, you've got to play that. We've got to play that. And this is Patrick Variki again, is it? No. Golden Years Boeing 707. That's the video. <coughs> okay, 35 minutes of Golden it, Years. It is, it is him. Yeah, but it's 35 minutes long. Yes. Okay, are, are you able to uh, uh, play it out on that particular, just that particular piece, yeah? Watch this, folks. This is as near we're going to get it to at the moment. Um, Ostend, same airport. Um, IAS, my old man. It's a dustman. He wears a dustman's cap. Yeah. This is my old man here, look, <laughs> standing next to his DC-8 there, look. Um, and that's him going out of Gatwick Airport. Look at that, mate. Look at that. Look, you know, fair play. Look at yeah. look at the old man there. I say how absolutely lovely it now. Look here. Um, yeah, he was a proper now. And it's a lovely. You know. It was a bit like uh, Faulty, wasn't he? Um, okay, folks, check this out. 707 um, with uh, International Aviation Services or Indicated Airspeed as well which is quite clever, uh, the way they did that. But IAS 707 Freighter. Um, and my old man wasn't flying this one. So here we go, GP. Touching down. Wow, man. Proper workhorse, mate, the 7 0. But a tiny aeroplane. Go and look at the first show that we did, folks. And when I, when I put a 707 up against a 747, it's no bigger than a 757, that thing, believe it or not. Uh, absolutely insane uh, how small. Uh, there's another one, look. <laughs> oh, hello, 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 wait a minute. Oh, TMA, look at this old thing. That looks like a 720, doesn't it? Or is it, because it's quite stubby, isn't it? Oh, mate. I don't think this geezer's as hardcore as the other fella. Yeah, Russ CT is tiny compared to the 747. 747 would dwarf the 707. But it looks big, doesn't it? Early days of... of, of uh...
Bob M making me cry. But we'll add magic stuff. Oh. Oh yeah. Fabulous show, really. <laughs> yeah, man. Half of mine to just play out people's videos, it's just, it's just like, play. I know, man. I know. It's just, it's just. This is this is reminiscing, isn't it, man? Look at that thing, man. It's got the eyebrows on her and everything. David Alford seemed to power up on the turn. Well, they do because you lose a lot of speed. A lot of speed bleeds off when you uh, when you come to turn. As soon as you turn that wheel, speed comes right off. Hello, what's he stopping for? He needs to intercept. Have we got an aircraft inbound? Look how close he is to the runway. Bob M. Memories of when I was a kid. Uh, Austin has long been an airport where all um, where all these old those old old no noisy planes were loud that were banned on other airports. Yes, very true. Um, and before the uh, the um, the hush kits came in. Margaret Burnett um, makes today's engines seem less polluting. Margaret, they're about 125% more efficient, uh, I think, than than these old engines. The the current um, uh, big and big oh, pfft. it would be a Cessna, wouldn't it? He's coming. He's always a Cessna, isn't it? Here we go. Go on, San. Amy, bring back the noisy planes. Yes. Oh. I think they're Pratt and Whitney's. I think most of the seven O's ran the Pratt and Whitney's, didn't they? She got hush kits on her. No, no hush kits. I think that's a 720. The reason I'm saying that is because she's got the HF aerial on the uh, on the tip of the tail. I don't think the 70s. Uh, I think that's a stubbier version of the uh, of the 707. Melanie reminds me back in the day, the old brickworks, the brickworks at Manchester before the second runway was built. Wow. Yeah, back when there was just like little picket white fences that you could literally walk onto the airfield almost un, unobstructed. Um, I heard that the uh, the um, the fence at Manchester was, was very low. Oh, here we go. Turn it, mate, turn it. Here we go. Oh, slingshot departure. Go on then. Nice and loud. Oh, he's cut it. Oh, oh he's on the brakes. Wow. Oh. Oh. This thing's bouncing, man. It's desperately go flying, isn't it? Look at that front end, just. Oh. Wonder what he shot this on. It's got to be on an old, very early video camera, isn't it? 
Wow, man. Look at that. Beautiful 707, man. Okay, GP. We're going to be here all night otherwise. <laughs> um, yeah, we are. We are. Um, wow. Uh, we'll do more of this, folks. We'll do more of this. Obviously, people are really enjoying it, and we will. Um, we will do more stuff uh, on old stuff. There are millions of videos online which uh, which we can do. Um, we'll do some more aircraft recognition as well, folks. Uh, we need to do next week. We're going to do. Um, the the, the, the the super twins I think we're going to look at the super twins and that will be uh, in one two hundredth scale that we'll do of course we'll switch out the airfield uh, tonight was just a uh, a special occasion to have um, the uh, the A380s in town all the ones we've got of course all of these ones available at Aviation Retail Direct as is that airport as well um, and um, you know, we're just very lucky to um, to be able to get hold of these pieces as well from uh, from our good friends. At uh, there's a story behind that uh, that th those cardboard buildings there as well, folks. See the light on inside the uh, inside the museum there. How cool is that, eh? Um, yeah, folks. Thank you so much. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed your company. Thank you for all all your comments as well. Really appreciate that. And uh, great to have you with us. Enjoy the rest of your evening, wherever you are, and just enjoy your day. Uh, we'll be back on Sunday, of course. We do have somebody, something special on Sunday, don't we, Jilly? I think um, somebody uh, that you, you mentioned earlier. Um, but uh, uh, we'll... No, yes and no. We'll let you know when we're going to be. Uh, just make sure you uh, download the app or uh, and also uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to, folks, if you want to get information on um, or, or updates on when we're live. Of course, we're live on Sundays and Wednesdays, um, as well as uh, during the week as well, other other days as well, uh, if we're overseas as well. Um, and this is just a little something that we're doing to get together at the end of the week to say hello and catch up with a little bit of news, a little bit of gossip, a little bit of cur curtain twitching, and uh, make sure you, you lot are all right. I hope you're doing well. Uh, somebody mentioning about the green screen. Very simple. It's a very simple thing to do. You not, Nothing special, I've got to be honest with you. Um, it, but you just choose your green screen. And this one seemed to work the best. Thanks, Jilly. Um, really appreciate uh, um, Jilly, the, um, what was it, uh, Chief Technical Operations Officer, the T... Ook. Um, thank you, Jilly, and um, thank you, everybody. Been great. We'll see you on Sunday. Look after yourselves. Jilly's going to run the titles now. So uh, thank you. See you. Bye-bye.